Somewhere in the remote hills of Indonesia, a farmer gently bends over a field not to pluck fruit or vegetables, but to harvest gold. No, this isn't fantasy. This is science a green twist on mining that could revolutionize how we extract precious metals from the earth. These are not ordinary plants. These are gold mining plants, and their story begins in the dirt. Plants are more than just passive scenery. They're chemical factories, constantly absorbing nutrients, filtering toxins, even communicating underground through fungal networks. But some plants have evolved a strange and rare superpower, the ability to extract metals from the soil. These are called hyperaccumulators, botanical alchemists that can absorb metals like nickel, zinc, cobalt, and yes, even gold, into their stems, leaves, and roots. One such plant is Alyssum bertoloni, a small perennial native to Italy. It doesn't just tolerate heavy metals, it thrives in them, absorbing nickel from ultramafic soils. But what about gold? That asks where the story turns to fight a meaning the process of using hyperaccumulator plants to literally mine metals from the ground. In the late 1990s, scientists began to explore the possibility that plants could be used as a sustainable alternative to traditional mining. It was a radical idea. Instead of dynamite, bulldozers, and cyanide leaching what if we could grow crops that extract metals from low-grade ore, even from mine tailings, or polluted soils. It sounded like science fiction until researchers proved it in the lab. A groundbreaking study showed that Brassica juncia, or Indian mustard, could extract gold from soil enhanced with a gold complexing agent like ammonium thiocyanate. Soon, the field of agromining, sometimes called phytamining, was born. But there's a catch gold is notoriously inert. It doesn't dissolve easily, and it's rarely available in forms that plants can absorb. So how do these green miners manage to pull it off? Gold is usually locked inside quartz or sulfide minerals, deep in the earth. But in soils with ultrafine particles of gold, such as mine tailings or naturally enriched regions, there is potential. The key is bioavailability. For plants to absorb gold, the metal must be dissolved into a soluble complex form. That's where scientists introduce chelating agents compounds that bind to gold and make it soluble. The most studied of these is thiocyanate. When added to soil, it helps dissolve minute particles of gold, forming complexes like tetricus thiocyanato, or at three, which some plant roots can absorb. After weeks of growth, these plants are harvested, dried, and incinerated. The remaining ash is then smelted to extract pure gold. This green gold rush has already been tested in field trials across Asia, Europe, and Australia. And one of the most promising plants? It might surprise you. Commonly known as vetiver, Chrysopagon zizanioids is a tall, fast-growing grass native to India. Traditionally used for erosion control and essential oils, vetiver has a deep, dense root system that makes it ideal for absorbing nutrients and contaminants. Recent studies have shown that vetiver can also uptake gold from mine tailings, especially when chelating agents are used. Its biomass is substantial, making it perfect for large-scale phytamining operations. Unlike smaller hyperaccumulators, vetiver grows rapidly and can be cultivated like a crop. But perhaps the most famous case of gold phytamining comes not from a lab or a greenhouse, but from a remote village in Indonesia. In the island of Buru, in eastern Indonesia, local farmers have become accidental pioneers in phytamining. The soil here is naturally enriched with gold, and after illegal mining operations left behind toxic tailings, researchers saw an opportunity to test phytamining in the real world. They planted Teres vitata and Indigophora species, experimenting with various chelating agents to increase gold bioavailability. What they found was remarkable. Within months, the plants began accumulating measurable amounts of gold in their biomass. 
One farmer reportedly harvested 0.4 grams of gold per kilogram of dry biomass a yield that, while modest, could add up when scaled across hectares of land. And for land that's otherwise polluted and unusable, this green approach offers a dual benefit, cleaning up the soil while extracting valuable metals. Traditional gold mining is brutal. It requires moving tons of earth, using cyanide or mercury to extract trace amounts of gold. The environmental damage is staggering poisoned rivers, deforestation, displaced communities. Phytamining, by contrast, is low impact. No toxic chemicals are released. No forests are destroyed. The soil can even be improved in the long term. And because the process works best on low-grade ores and tailings places conventional mining wouldn't tea bother with, it can actually complement traditional operations rather than replace them. It's not just about gold, either. Phytamining has been explored for cobalt in Zambia, nickel in Albania, and even rare earth elements in China. But phytamining isn't perfect. For one, it's slow. Plants need weeks or months to grow and accumulate metals. That's fine for long-term projects, but not for companies chasing quarterly profits. Second, gold uptake is inconsistent. Even with chelating agents, many plants struggle to absorb meaningful amounts. The chemistry is tricky, and the process only works in specific soil types. Finally, there's the economics. Unless gold prices are high and the biomass yield is optimized, phytamining might not be competitive with conventional mining yet. Still, for small scale, artisanal miners or regions seeking eco-friendly remediation, it's a promising frontier. To overcome these challenges, scientists are now experimenting with genetic engineering. Could we design a plant that naturally produces gold chelating compounds in its roots? or a plant with super-enhanced metal transport systems. Synthetic biology might hold the key. Imagine a field of custom-built plants that extract not just gold, but lithium for batteries, cobalt for EVs, even uranium safely, silently, and sustainably. There is also interest in integrating phytamining with circular economy models using plant waste for bioenergy after metal extraction or combining agromining with agriculture to improve food security in poor soils. And with climate change pushing us toward greener technologies, phytamining fits the future we're trying to build. The image is almost poetic. Fields of golden grass swaying in the wind. Not just feeding people, but pulling gold from the earth one root at a time. It's a quiet revolution. One that doesn't roar with explosions or scar the mountains. But beneath the surface, something extraordinary is happening. Nature, once again, is showing us the way. And maybe the next great gold rush, one tea come with pickaxes or dredges but with seeds, soil, and sunlight. Because sometimes the real treasure grows on trees. So what do you think? Could plants really replace mines? Could your garden someday double as a gold field? Let us know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this deep dive into the science of plant mining, hit like and subscribe. There is a whole world of green technology out there, and we're just getting started. Until next time, stay curious.